Welcome back, everyone. We're starting this episode off by completing some of the Desert Achievement Diary. We're doing this because getting around the desert is kind of inconvenient if you don't have the Desert Amulet 2, which can teleport you straight to Narda. We want to do that real quick, and then we're going to do some quests in the desert, because I don't want to run Shifting Tombs without having the maximum Menaphos rep bonus I can have, which after you do each of those Menaphos quests, you get a 25% boost to your reputation gain. I believe we can do up to our man in the north with the amount of reputation we have currently. So we're going to do those quests and all the prerequisites needed to do those quests. For those unaware, if you successfully complete a round of shifting tombs, you get some camouflage fragments, which are used to make the elite thieving outfit. Why would we want to do shifting tombs instead of thieving? Well, shifting tombs gives 250 every time you go through it. it takes about, at most, five minutes to complete a round of shifting tombs, so you're getting 250 fragments every five minutes. If you just thieve normally, you get about, I think, 100 every five minutes. If you're level 99, that's doubled, so you get 500 every shifting tombs round you play. Of course, we're not 99 yet. But the camouflage outfit is very useful, and I would like to have it, just in the off chance I decide to, even after 99, if I decide to thieve some Priftinous Elves for a while, it has a 7% chance to double the loot you get, which is effectively increasing the loot you get by 7%. Definitely worthwhile. Whether I sit in shifting tombs for hours on end, unlocking the outfit, remains to be seen. But I want to have the ability to do that, even if I don't want to. Obviously, we used all the XP on Herb Lore, but now we have the Desert Amulet 2. The Desert Amulet 1 is pretty much terrible, so I'm not even going to talk about it. The Desert Amulet 2, however, makes it so we fail the Agility Pyramid less, because that's totally important. More importantly, we have unlimited teleports to Narda, and we could also turn 50 soda ash into molten glass every day while we're in the desert. That could be very useful, especially if you're an Iron Man, and you have a bunch of soda ash from killing, say, corrupted scorpions. If you can actually find a world where you can kill the damn thing, since there are so many freaking people AFKing in that goddamn dungeon. And finally, we have some teak trees in Uzer, because that's totally the meta for chopping teak trees. We have a discount in the Mage Training Arena, which we might use to get Infinity Boots at some point, because they are super expensive. We can get noted goat horns from Desert Goats. Potato Cactus from the Weird Old Man, and the Scepter of Gods, which you don't have, now has a charge cap of 20. It's so weird doing these quests at such a high level so much later into the game. I usually do this quest at, like, level 50. Honestly, I do these quests so early. But this time around, I didn't. I just kept putting it off. But we did it now, and we have access to a bank and soften them. Oh, how fantastic. Then we move on to dealing with Skabaris. Another easy quest, which, likewise, I always do very early in my account career because it gives a decent amount of XP in several skills. But the amount of XP it gives us now, at our total level, at our combat level, is quite insignificant. But we can make an enchanted water tiara so we don't need water skins when we're in the desert. I'm sure this quest won't make that completely useless. The boss fight wasn't too bad. Again, it was just an issue of accuracy and waiting until the thing died. We now have immunity from the desert heat. This quest made the Enchanted Water Tiara completely useless. We got an agility level from running Shifting Tombs a few times. It looks like I got 86, but actually it's 88. Safe Kraken got us to 96 Thieving. We can now pickpocket Heaven Workers in Prifthinus. Taking a break from Safe Kraken, we're going to do Do No Evil. This quest can be pretty annoying when you have to lure the Ninja Monkey to the bananas. He is very picky when it comes to how far a banana is from him. He prefers local produce. This quest lets us make the Cramulet, which means we could talk to camels, ghosts, and monkeys at the same time. What eldritch horror will they think of next? A man in the north gives us a 175% boost to Manaphos rep. We can do it, so we might as well do it. It's a terrible quest, by the way. There's a post-quest reward that gives you 20,000 strength XP if you go to a statue in the duel arena. There's a similar post-quest reward after Do No Evil, but I forgot to get it, so I'm going to get it later. But when you come in here, you get 20,000 strength XP, and you can take these two items and do whatever you want with them. So I'm done with safe cracking. I want to thieve from Priftinus Elves. It will take longer, but it's more AFK, and the rewards you get from them are much better. Specifically, Iowerth, Kadarn, and Amlod. Uh, they give you 
super strengths, super attacks, super range, super defense, super magics. They're all one dose, but still they, they add up after a while. And Mlod gives you porters. I love porters. So we want to keep those for when we decide to train some gathering skills. I like pickpocketing the elves. I have 35 million thieving XP on my Iron Man. I have like 103 million thieving XP on my main. It And I got it all from pickpocketing Prift and his elves. Definitely worth it. Iron Man definitely should get 99 thieving, specifically to pickpocket Prift and his elves. And it's one of the only ways to get a crystal acorn seed before you max. You automatically get one when you enter the max guild, but <laughs> that's, that's a while away. We still have the Ardoin Cape 1. Now, the Ardoin Cape 3 gives you a bonus to pickpocketing everywhere in Gelenor. We need to complete Kenneth's Concerns so we can finish that achievement set. This is an easy quest, it's a quick quest, it's an old quest, it's a weird quest, admittedly. But we have to do it just so we could sell some Rubium to Ezekiel Lovecraft in Witchhaven. Medium set done, you're never gonna guess what I use the XP lamp on. That's right, Herblor. Totally out of left field. The Ardoin Cloak 2 gives you 10 seconds of immunity when teleporting to the Vorgenus via the lever in East Ardoin, but not from Edgeville, assuming you're wearing the cloak. However, it's bugged apparently and it doesn't work. Oh well. But at all times we get all these bonuses. More drops from creature creation are noted, increased chance of success when pickpocketing in Ardoin, more runes from ZMI crafting, we could teleport to the manor farm once a day, the Ring of Life can teleport us to Ardoin. The Wizard will give us 100 noted Pure Essence, and we can get additional Chompy Birds. We use the Hard Lamp to get 20,000 Herblore XP, and that means we leveled up and we have 94 Herblore. We can make Prayer Renewals now. The most important bonus the Ardoin Cloak 3 gives us is the increased chance of success when pickpocketing and stealing from chests anywhere in RuneScape. This includes Prif Dennis Elves, at least I assume so. We can change the Watchtower Teleport to the center of Unil, which is good for Clue Scrolls. We get some more essence from property every day, but that's useless. And we get a higher chance of getting additional chompy birds when hunting chompy birds, which we're never going to do. 98 thieving, we can pickpocket my lair workers. All right, everyone, prep the fanfare. What? Where's the fanfare? Oh, I have sounds off. Oh, okay. Uh, so we got 99 thieving. Now this is actually when pickpocketing from Prift and Ascells becomes really good, because the Thieving Skill Cape, when worn, notes all items that you pickpocket if the item is notable. So we came down to the Rogue's Den, talked to Martin Thwaite, and he sold us our first Skill Cape. How exciting. So this was the loot from about 4 million Thieving XP, all from Prift and Ascells. It's not too bad, it's about 15 mil. I mean, the... Hourly rate is probably maybe 800k an hour, maybe 700k an hour. Not a lot. But hey, profit's profit. And I can use all these potions to level my Herblore. We also got a pair of magic brawling gloves. Now, brawling gloves usually give you way more XP per action if you use them in the wilderness. The combat brawling gloves, though, I believe just give you a base amount of extra XP. And it's about 300,000, so you don't have to wear them in the wilderness. I'll probably just use them when we're on a Slayer task. I'm sure there are a bunch of PVMers out there right now, you know, because my videos are watched by millions, who are saying, why would you waste 130 mil on a Luck of the Dwarves and a Grace of the Elves? Those don't help you with PVM. I mean, why would you, you wouldn't even use the, 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 the Luck of the Dwarves except for a switch when the boss dies, and the Grace of the Elves, you can't even use that when you fight stuff. That's just used for teleporting around and using porters. You skill, you do skills. A skiller? Oh, you're supposed to just max and then be done with skills. Well, here's what I tell you. You're right. But I suck at PVM. I'm good at skilling. Because it's easy. Almost five weeks, my kingdom's been collecting goods for me. That's yeah, about 12 mil. Neat. Because we got one skill to 99, that means we can now enter the max guild garden and attune one of these skilling portals. We're going to attune it to the overgrown idols. Why? Because I now have a Grace of the Elves, I can teleport to the Overgrown Idols from anywhere in RuneScape, which means I have very easy access to a Gnome Glider whenever I want. To celebrate my new Grace of the Elves and being able to collect Saren Spirits with a Luck of the Dwarves, which means I have a slight possibility of getting a Hazelmere Signet Ring while skilling, I'm going to get some Invention XP so I have a Rodomatic, and I'm going to fish in the Deep Sea Fishing, Swarm Fishing spot, get some Saren Spirits to give me some loot, maybe I'll get something good. I probably won't, but I'm going to try for it anyway, 
and we're going to disassemble this rod when it gets to level 10 and I believe get an invention level. Fishvention isn't a fast way to level invention, but it's an easy way. And we got 77 invention. There are a lot of blueprints to discover at 77 when boosting with an extreme invention potion. So many that we're able to get to 79. And remember, the boost doesn't just let me discover the blueprint. I can create the items that I boost to discover. I just don't because I don't need them right now. However, I was able to unlock the old DAC coil and we're going to craft it. So we'll always have it. It's basically a cannon, except it takes one inventory spot and it uses magic and it attacks everything within, I think it's a nine by nine area, or maybe it's a five by five area around it with one cannonball. It's good for keeping things aggressive and drawing things towards you and just always having a little bit of damage going out constantly. I got a Barrow's Reaper assignment, so I figured it would be wise to complete the hard Mortania tasks because the Mortania Legs 3 provides some bonuses for when you're doing Barrows. When worn, the Mortania Legs 3 give you extra prayer experience when cremating shades. You have a better chance of getting shade keys when cremating those shades. And there's a 50% chance that the Blood Altar Teleport tablets won't break when you use them. Also, when activated, you can teleport to the Ectophantus Slime Pit 10 times a day instead of just 5. And finally, Robin will convert 26 sets of bones per day into dust and slime. We no longer need the Ghost Beak Amulet to talk to ghosts. Prayer Drain is halved during Barrows. We get double runes from Barrows. We get 10% more rewards from Temple Trekking. We can bank from the loot chest in Barrows directly. We have a shortcut access to the Crystal Mine. And the Big Book of Piracy now has a charge cap of 20 charges. We can't teleport with the Big Book of Piracy yet because we need to do pieces of hate. But once we do that quest, we'll have a big book of piracy that we could teleport 20 times with. Also, I used the lamp on Herblor. Shocking. Yeah, look at that. We got a, uh, a double chest. That's pretty cool. That's about a mil. Not bad. I think I'm going to come here to AFK every now and then. It's not amazing XP, and it's not super engaging. But it's simple enough. You just mine the vines away. Go to the center of the idol, and then you mine the idol, and then you get a little boost to your woodcutting. Either you woodcut faster, or you get a little bit more XP. It's not great, it's not terrible, but it fills the gap between 81 woodcutting and, what is Crystal Trees, 94? You know, there was basically nothing there, so this, this, this fills it in pretty good. It's okay. At least we can level up our augmented hatchet and have a chance of getting Saren Spirits. We'll get that Hazelmere Signet Ring in no time. Trust me. I want to get 120 combat, because once we get 120 combat with 90 Slayer, we can get tasks from Lania Kea on Anachronia. Summoning is very fast to level up, especially since we have a ton of Talon Beast charms just sitting around from when we were doing Temple Trekking. They give about 1,000 XP per Talon Beast pouch, and we have about 70-ish charms, so we'll get about... 100,000 XP since we have a little bit of bonus XP. That should get us to 120. We're 119 right now. And if it doesn't, maybe we can get a prayer level. We were able to get 84 summoning, but it wasn't enough to get us to 120. So we need to figure out something else to do. Combat week started, and it was fun. So I recorded this during combat week. And all combat skills had double XP, and that included prayer, depending on how you were training it. On Gilded Altars, it wasn't doubled killing Virewatch with a Sun Spear, it was doubled. So I came here to kill some Virewatch to level up my Sun Spear a little bit because it was close to disassembling. We were also pretty close to getting a defense level, so while I was killing these guys, I switched to defense just to get to 81 defense because I was pretty sure 81 defense would get me to 120 combat. And we can now use the barricade ability with 81 defense. Uh, that's... That's a thing we can do, but this did get us 120 combat, which means we now, with 90 Slayer, can get tasks from Lania Kea. We also disassembled the Sun Spear and got 80 Invention. Look at me, super lucky. I was able to get Scavenging 3. It's not Scavenging 4, but that'll come later. But I was able to get Scavenging 3 and Relentless 5, so we're going to throw those on a Garb of Subjugation and be as gods. Or at least get decent components. I didn't have enough components, enough classical components, to make any more ancient armor gizmos. So I just went with what I could get here. I got Efficient 2 and Venom Blood for our legs. It's pretty mediocre, but at least Venom Blood will keep us from being poisoned if we ever go to fight Krill. 
I would definitely prefer Enhanced Devoted, but we don't have the components. We don't have the faceted components yet. We'll get them in the future. Our first task from Marvran was Celestial Dragons. Now, it's a task that takes a while, but it's pretty easy since they only use Fire Breath, and if you stay out of melee range, they can't hurt you with a super anti-fire potion. So I just came here with regular prayers since we don't need soul split and I needed the accuracy boost from the regular prayers and just uh, hung out for a bit and killed them. Double XP. Gonna get a lot of ranged XP and a lot of Slayer XP. They give a lot of XP. They just take a while to kill. 85 Slayer. We can now use Death Swiftness. We can also spend 100 mil on a Wyvern Crossbow. I'm not. We're going to upgrade our Slayer Helmet for 100 points. But we're going to hold off on buying the next upgrade until we have more of a point buffer. That way I don't feel like I have no points in case I need to cancel several tasks in a row. 90 Slayer. We can kill Dark Beast. We can kill Edamu if we have 115 Dungeoneering. We have a new Port Adventurer. And we can upgrade the Slayer Lodge to Tier 3 if we get a Dinosaur Tooth from Dinosaurs on Anachronia. Speaking of Anachronia... Let's go have a chat with the highest res Slayer Master, Lenny Akea. She gives us Vile Blooms. Vile Blooms aren't a bad task if you have access to some of the other Vile Blooms at higher levels. But right now we can only kill the ones in Southeastern Anachronia, the Devil Snagglers, I think they're called. They kind of suck to kill if you don't have enough accuracy, since they heal up or do a bunch of damage if you don't do enough damage to them all at once. I can't remember. I never fight them. I hate them. So we're not going to do this task. I'd rather have dinosaurs. But instead, she gives us dragons. They're kind of like dinosaurs. We'll go with a different task. Abyssal demons. We're going to take that because corrupted creatures are impossible to kill because there are so many people AFKing in the dungeon. I hate it. The Twin Furies gave me crabs. We got the Slayer pet. Awesome. And we got Jack of Blades for having three combat scaling pets. I finished a task. Was close to another level. Went to Scarabs and Menaphos to get 91, thinking, hey, maybe I can kill some Scarabs in the Softenum Slayer dungeon. Surely there aren't a bunch of people there, I was wrong. Instead, we got another Abyssal Demon task on which we got 90 magic. Now we can get a Noxious Staff if we're so inclined to spend 170 mil on it. Yes, ranged is better, but I like magic. I got this Royal Crossbow to level 12, but I think next time I'll just disassemble it at level 10, since making a new Royal Crossbow won't be that difficult and only cost about, what, 400k? And we have 81 Invention. Combat Week. As I said earlier, doubles prayer experience. The Dragon Rider Amulet increases the amount of prayer experience you get when you bury a dragon bone. Put this all together, when you bury one dragon bone, you get 303 XP. That's 50 XP more than you would get on a gilded altar. Not to mention burying them directly instead of offering them on an altar is much faster. Using Alt-1 to time my XP rate I was getting something like 1.4 million XP per hour. So, I bought about 5,500 dragon bones. We're going to bury them. And we're going to get 95 prayer. Turmoil. Torment. Anguish. We never have to switch to the standard prayer book ever again. These prayers are better. We did some shifting tombs. And we got 80 runecrafting. Which means all of our stats are base 80. I saw this weird item in my inventory while I was doing Shifting Tombs. It's worth 71 mil. An offhand Kopesh. <laughs> well. Okay. <laughs> it sold for 102 mil. 95 Hunter? From Big Game Hunter. Because I got really lucky with the Kopesh, I decided to spend 177 mil and get a Noxious Staff. Yes, I could have gotten a Wyvern Crossbow since range is technically better, but that'd be tier 85, and the only way for me to have a tier 90 weapon that can use bolts would be to get an ascension crossbow. Those cost even more. Since it's combat week and we have access to the Elder Overload Golems, I decided to spend an hour killing Vindicta with our new staff. And I gotta say, it's much better, it's much, much better than using the Twin Fury weapons. But I also have the Elder Overload and the higher level prayers, which I didn't have the last time I was fighting Vindicta. You know, it's got higher weapon damage, and there's is too many variables to compare it directly, but it's a tier 90 weapon. So it has tier 90 damage and tier 90 accuracy instead of tier 80 damage and tier 90 accuracy. 
I'm excited. I'm happy. 91 magic, we can sift soil on the Lunar Spellbook and enchant Jade by Criminal Bolts. So this is the loot from killing Vindicta for an hour. I think I killed about maybe 22 of them, because each kill took about two minutes. There were some sharks as well, but I don't know exactly how many, so I'm just going to cook them later. I never turned in a bunch of the seals that I had from killing Vindicta and the Twin Furies in the past. So we're going to turn them all into the Slisky Emissary person because we want to unlock the ability to use shadow components, the specific components from these shadow glaives that you can get from Grigorovic. I don't think I'll need them anytime soon, but if we ever want to get Karaming on our Noxious Staff, we'll need to unlock the ability to use those components. We got a dinosaur task, finally. A hundred of them. So we're going to kill them in this safe spot. And we don't have to worry about accuracy because of the Elder Overload and the Noxious Staff. But I brought a Gothic Staff just in case. I also brought some note paper so we can note the bones. We can now kill Eret with 92 Slayer. This is the loot from 100 Dinosaurs, no Totem Piece or Dinosaur Tooth. But it's not too bad. Just from the items alone, it's about 14k per kill. But they can also drop up to 26k in raw coins. And they do that pretty frequently. 92 magic while we were doing a Viper task. Barrows. Really fun. Tree run. Got 90 farming. Did some more big game hunter. And I got another dragomatic. What is that, 5 or 6 so far? Which makes sense. I've hunted about 5 or 600 dinosaurs. So you would expect, yeah, 5 or 6 Maddox. That's about right. 93 Slayer while doing big game hunter. We can now kill ice strike worms. I really need to get a fire cape. Combat week meant double Slayer points, so I did some point boosting and got a ton of Slayer points. We're going to spend a thousand Slayer points to learn how to attach the Charming Imp and Bone Crusher to our tool belt. It's definitely going to be worth it. So here's where the video is ending. I'm just going to have a little chat with you guys right now. Gather around. Fireside chat. I'm, I'm FDR. Come on. Okay. So the combat week is ending as of the recording of this footage. It's already over. We're in D&D &D week now, which isn't particularly interesting. I'm running ED3 for some levels. You know, you got double combat XP, you got the Elder Overloads, and now we have better prayers and whatnot. Good time to do it. But double XP weekend was announced again. Now, I'm not too happy about it because I feel like we just had one very recently. Um... To be honest, Combat Week was so much more fun than Double XP Weekend. Even if they didn't do the Double Combat experience, it was just so nice to not have to worry about dying. I died so much. And it didn't matter. But I need to plan for Double XP Weekend again. I've kind of been passively planning and gathering herb lore ingredients. Uh, pretty much just collecting herbs, farming herbs, and just having them in my bank. Ready to be used whenever I want it. That's definitely going to be something I'm going to be training during Double XP Weekend. I'm going to spend the week before it which is the week now, as I record this audio, collecting stuff for the double XP. Now, I have a non-trivial amount of protean items in my bank. They just accumulate because I never use them because they feel icky, kind of. They just, it's, eh, it feels too easy. But, you know, you, you know, smoke them if you got them, right? So I'm going to use them on double XP weekend, but because my levels are, I don't want to say high, but high enough, I don't think they'll contribute too much, to be honest. Like, I have a thousand protean hides, I have a few thousand protean planks that are just sitting in there, like a thousand protean logs. They'll probably get me around five or six hundred thousand XP uh, on the weekend when it's double XP, the, the logs and the hides, which is maybe a level and a half in crafting and fletching. I also have a bunch of protean traps that I thought I was going to use at some point, but <laughs> I got so much XP from Big Game Hunter, I think I'll just level Hunter to 99 that way. Just progressively. I'm not even going to focus on it. I'll just do it here and there. So the next video will, I hope, come out before double XP drops. And I'll just go over what I've prepared and the things I've done since the end of this video and 
the start of the next video, just the quests and whatever I've done to progress in the things I've collected. I'll we'll, we'll talk more in detail at that time when I can show you what's in my bank and what's going to be used, and then I'll make videos during double XP like I did last time, showing you the things I'm leveling up. It'll definitely be frenetic. It'll be a very, very hectic. I, I like to jump around between skills. I mean, if it's obvious, if you've watched this far, I love training things, you know, like two levels here, one level there, two levels here. I don't like just going straight for 99. Even, even, even though I did go from what, like 76 to 92 Hunter doing big game Hunter trying to get a Matic. That was fun though. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, anyway. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.